Okay, just in case I want to put something, it will be here. Let's start. Hello everyone, I was asked to create this video to give my knowledge and idea how to start a business. Crafting business, actually any business in Ireland. So what I'm planning to talk about, and in a nutshell, it will be one, name of the business, two, type of the business, three, product, and then taxes and VAT. Hi, my name is Barbara Nalevko, and most people know me as Knitting I Love. I am not an accountant or a financial advisor. I hope to share with you some practical knowledge in a plain English, but as I'm originally from Poland, hopefully I won't make that many mistakes. Therefore, I encourage you to check comments down below because I hope that people who are accountants or their retired accountants will watch this and give some more feedback and maybe correct me if I was wrong in something uh, or even give more ideas for the future videos maybe. I'm not sure I'm going to go that way because my channels are about knitting finished objects and some tutorials about knitting. Also it's slightly easier for me to search for things and understand things in regards to this tax related world because I finished um, economics and economics slash accounting in my college uh, where I received, I would say, technical education. So maybe that would be like, I'm a technic. So I think a bachelor, maybe that will be equivalent. I'm not sure. But I did not continue that to kind of get proper accountant qualification. I went to do completely different stuff, which is a PE. So I got master's in physical education. So I could teach at school, but I don't. <laughs> Okay, let's start. First things first, what you need to think of is about name. Are you, do you want to open your business under your name and surname or just random name? Therefore, any name you pick before registered for anything, I would strongly suggest you to search social media. Is this name available on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter? And check also, is there a domain available just in case your business succeeds and you want to have a website. So quick information, you need domain, hosting and a website per se, although sometimes those two last are are something that you can go and create on some platforms. So if you know any platforms that you can create a nice website and have a, a business, leave the link down below. However, be aware that normally that those websites probably will charge you $25 per month. So approximately your expense will be $300 per year to just have a website. And by saying that, I mean not, I'm not saying that those websites will give you an access to create an online shop um, on your website. Therefore, it'll be just an investment of informing people about your brand, but not exact place to purchase your products. But you can definitely link them to the platforms you put your products on. And I got a question, one question, so on the screen, uh, do you need a business license and do you need to copyright your business name? So like I said, you don't have to copyright your business name if your name is your na name and surname. However, if you want to create a completely different name and run your business under that name, you will have to register that name or you will need to buy a trademark for that name. I don't, I think there's just two options. There's nothing like copyright thing going on in regards to your name. In regards to register your name, it's not that expensive. I think it's approximately 20 euro, maybe slightly more in Ireland to get a name. So you can actually apply for a few names if you want to, and then decide which one you want to use then. But if you're running, if you want to run under your name, you don't have to pay anything. And do you need a business license? Yes, you do. And that's why we're going to move to another section now. And to break it through, maybe you may ask yourself a question, do I really have to do any registration? Um, and let's watch this. Look, 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 I started a business. Well, obviously not a cleaning business. <laughs> no, I'm making flower barrettes, see? What do you think? I mean, this could be a business, right? How many of these can you make a day? Mm, about 20. And how much profit do you make per penny blossom? I don't know, like 50 cents? I'm not sure. No, of course you're not. All right. $10 a day times five days a week times 52 weeks a year is $2,600. That's all? Before taxes. Well, I don't have to pay taxes on this stuff. I believe the Internal Revenue Service would strongly disagree. 
I hope I don't have to say anything more about that. So let's move on to the options we have to register uh, our business, to get license for our business. Therefore, there are three things. We have sole trader, and I heard, I think in the US, you call it on the screen. And then we have partnership, and then we have corporation. Uh, obviously, for the first two, when we're talking about sole traders and partnerships, they quite almost the same uh, from perspective of that the owners are labeled for. Uh, so basically, if you pick a sole trader, you're picking a car that you can name under yourself or you can name under the name you're going to register. You drive your car on your own, so you decide when you want to go. Obviously, you can um, hire people. So before you hire uh, anyone, before you give them even one hour work, you have to apply for the uh, employment tax, which you can do if you're in Ireland under um, on that website. But first, obviously, you have to have your business registered. So you are labeled for income tax. And this is an income tax that if you're an employee and you work for a different company, you will find that on your payslips. In Ireland, normally we would say that if you're an employee, you're working on the PAYE system. And just to let you know, you can check all the information and tax credits or tax allowance that you can um, claim under revenue.ie, but you have to register and then log into your My Account. Just saying, something very helpful. As I mentioned, it is an income tax and it literally has the same cutoff uh, points, so maybe call them thresholds, um, as um, different scenarios of an employee would have. So someone who's hired by someone else. So either you're a sole trader or you're receiving your payslips, you can go to the website, which is this one, citizensinformation.ie, where you will find a table with information um, about income tax thresholds. So it is in Ireland either 20% or 40%. However, the difference is that if you are employee, there is a threshold for you that you don't have to pay tax at all. However, if you pass that threshold by one euro, you will have to pay 20% tax from the full amount that you earned. In regards to trader, well, you're paying from the full amount. Anyway, <laughs> standard rate cut points as I call them, thresholds, um, depends on your situation. So either you're a single person, you are a married couple or a civil partners but with one income and then you married couple or a civil partners with two incomes or you are a single parent. Situation with bo both incomes, there is obviously a threshold but sometimes that threshold have some restrictions of the second lower income that the married couple partner gets. So the partnership. Partnership, you have the same car. Basically, uh, there are two people that drive in it, unless I think you can have more partners. I'm not sure. We have a situation that we are partners uh, in business. Uh, so we are partnerships. And then the difference over here is only that we had to have a written contract specifying how, mu how many percentage of the income we are going to take. Also, that probably equals percentage of each of us, um, how much of the company we own. Yeah, yeah. But because in our scenario, in our situation, we are a married couple and we, we are a married couple and we are business partners, basically it's the same thing. So our book uh, system, book keeping system is identical. We're filling the form 11, which you put more information into it um, and then we have to fill in form one which is the one for partnerships. However in a different scenario if I had a partnership with someone completely different in a different scenario we're filling in form one and then we're taking information from the separate incomes as a partnerships and we put them into our individuals uh, form 11s to have a tax paid. And let's move to corporate. Um, basically, I would suggest you to open something like that once you know that your income will be over 50,000 per year, because we're talking over here about LTD. That's what we call it in Ireland. However, some similarities you can find in those kind of types. And basically over here, you have to have board of directors. Um, you need at least one director, one secretary, one sh um, shareholder and other stuff that I can write over here. And if you want to pa pause and read them, go for it. I will not go any more details with that because uh, let's face it, 
we're just starting. Probably you've heard that Ireland has the lowest corporation tax, 12.5%, and that's why other companies from abroad are coming and registering their companies in Ireland. Um, however, just bear in mind, to get that 12.5%, you have to qualify for that. And just be aware from perspective corporation that 12% tax is paid from the company. However, let's say you're a director and you pay in your of wages. So you're putting that yourself on your payslip. And on that payslip, you are treated as an employee. Therefore, it depends on your threshold, you be uh, you will be required to pay either 20 or 40% uh, income tax. There's also something like 25% tax for corpor corporations, but you know what, I'm not going to go there. So now, there is another tax that we're going to include into company in case we would want to hire someone. And just be aware, don't let anyone work even one hour unless you have the employment tax registration done. Obviously, once you have your business license, you have access to uh, this website, which is www.brass.ie. You can go there. I have my own one. I can go there. And basically, you can apply for that tax and they will send you more information what exactly you will need to do if when you want to um, hire someone. So I'm not going in there because I don't have that situation. We're not, we're not hiring anyone. So I'm going to leave it for you for your research. I will say something about products. So basically when you have a company you would want to sell something, right? So either you can sell services, you can sell goods or you can sell digital goods which you divide them to automotive or not. I hope I'm saying it right. I could mess up that word though. So now for the services, most cases where we're talking about it, we're talking about like plumbers, tilers, painters, mechanics, so on, so on. They would have reduced rate in Ireland, which is 13.5%. Obviously, when you have a business in Ireland, you could also class classify it for 4.8% or that would be farmers or 9%. Uh, that would be double check that things may have changed, but I think hotels, leisures, and 9% will be included now as a digital good sale, automated sale. <laughs> yeah, we got, we're got we talking about 13.5%, 13, 13 which is services, and we're going to standard rate, which is normally 23%, but I'm talking now when we have a lockdown and we're in the year 2020, and then Ireland decided that until the last day of February 2021st, we operate on 21% VAT. So now we're talking about VAT, evaluated tax, or we're talking about sales tax, or we're talking about GST over here, which kind of similar, there are similarities. VAT is in European Union. And if you come into European Union and you would want to buy a hat in the shop, you would see that the hat costs, let's say five euro. And in that you have a hidden VAT. It's exactly the same thing as sales of tax. The difference is that when you go to UNSA and you go to buy a hat, you will see, let's say, that the hat costs five euro, but you go to the till and you will be charged extra for that sale tax. So it's basically the same thing, it's only how it is presented, it's different. And I know GSD, I think it's in Australia, maybe other few countries, which is goods service tax. And now I'm not sure. I've never been there. So how it operates, either like in Europe or like in America, let me know down below if you know. But basically, yeah. So I showed you over here kind of the rates in Ireland, but obviously you can have something similar in your country. So definitely check it out. Uh, if you're interested in Ireland for a specific products, like even things like how what VT rate should apply to certain item, you can go on revenue and look a search for that rates. And basically you will have a search box when you write down the thing that you want to sell and they will, they will tell you the rate and even the history of that item um, in regards was the VT rate reduced before or not and so on and so on. So in regards VAT, we have to answer the question, what product or service it is. Like I said, you can double check that on www.revenue.ie, look for VAT rates, and you will have a search box to write down the service or a goods or a product or good goods that you would want to sell. And they should uh, provide you with information what kind of VAT rate you're getting. No worries. If you don't get that information, like I said, you're probably licensed already for your business and 
when you log into Ross, you have something like my my inquiries and, and there is options and you can ask questions to the people working there. <laughs> the other two things is where is it sold and who is selling it? And this, these two questions are quite important. But before we start even adding VET on our to pricing our product, you're probably asking yourself your questions, do I really have to pay VAT? And there are so pros and cons about it. So pluses and minuses, right? I hope I'm saying right. And who doesn't have to pay for VAT? So the story is like that. If you are registered in Ireland and you live in Ireland, okay? Um, so your business is registered in Ireland. There are thresholds and that if you don't, cross, you don't have to pay VT. But be aware, this is a trick, if you are a business registered outside of Ireland, then you have to pay VT. Even if you are not registered in your own country as a VT business, you have to register in Ireland or you have to apply for register for VAT registration in Ireland. And basically you count your VAT for that country and once you get that registration, probably the system online, you just submit, submit the money, you just pay the money to the country. Okay, let's answer the question, is it, is it better to be registered for VAT or not being registered for VAT? Like I said, if you're not going under the threshold, you don't have to be registered. However, in Ireland, there's something like voluntary registration for VAT and you can use that um, to go straight away and pay VAT. And you probably would say, who the heck would be doing that? Pricing your product, um, you would have to add an extra 23% uh, for your customers to pay. And in that case, you straight away could end up lower in the competition on your market. If you don't have to re register and pay VAT, obviously your prices are cheaper. However, the risk is that once you pass that threshold, you will have to pay VAT for the whole past 12 months of those invoices that you did not put VAT on. And because we were, we voluntary um, registered for VAT, I'm not sure in this situation how it would work. Uh, hopefully you will be just deducted the VAT from the invoices that you've already created. Hopefully you don't have to pay extra on those invoices. Hopefully, <laughs> check it. So if you register, you don't have that stress, you straight away uh, put a product price the way you want to with the VAT. Therefore, you also don't have to stress that if you, ha if you haven't been registered, but you try pass the threshold, you would have to then add extra VAT on your product. And then it can be a shock for your clients, or you will decide to include that VAT into your actual price, and then you'll be losing on your income, and your business may not be as productive or successful as it was. Oh, basically, you may not earn enough to pay your bills. Second of all, uh, if you're not registered for VAT, you cannot recover VAT from your expenses on the products or services that you provide. So what that means. Basically, if you are my client and you buy something from me, I'm going to give you an invoice. And that invoice has two main stuff. You have subtotal and you have VAT over that. So basically what I do, what that VAT stands is it's a VAT on sales. So that's the VAT from all the invoices that I gathered, um, that's in one column. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to gather my bills my expenses, my things that I have to pay to run my business and gathered the amount um, of VAT from them and that's called um, VAT on expenses. So obviously, obviously, hopefully you don't spend more than you earn, therefore one digit is higher than the other one and there is some digit, some number over there to pay to collector general, so basically revenue. However, if you are not registered, you can't do that. So basically your invoice is without VAT, but your expenses are including VAT and that VAT is your expense that you can deduct from subtotals. The subtotals, subtotals runs the same way. Basically you take sales, you take expenses and you have some number. And this is a number, I think they call it net profitable. 
you know, words. And this is um, a sum that you would normally uh, calculate your income tax. However, if you sole trader or you like us partnerships, there are other tax um, credits that we can deduct from that number to even lower that amount to be multiplied by income tax rate, either 20 or 40 percent. Um, so whatever is there, this is our number that we can compare to the thresholds that the go uh, government um, shows from perspective of our situation. So married couple with two incomes. Now I hope I'm saying everything right. Therefore, if you're a single parent, or if you're just a single person, or if you a married couple or a partnership, partners, or your civil partners with one income, you check those tables and you compare that digit number to the tables. <laughs> you will know then which income tax rate applies to you. Now, hello, I'm editing the video and I noticed that I forgot to tell you about preliminary tax. So I'll write that over here. So basically what that means is uh, this is a tax that Ireland collects 31 days before end of the year and 23rd day of that month. So what does it mean? Well, I think that means that you can pay it on the 23rd of November. But basically in Ireland you have to file your form 1411, so those about income taxes file and pay by the 31st of October. Um, therefore, we personally pay that preliminary tax um, at the same time. What is the preliminary tax? It is either 100% um, tax of the previous year or 90% of the tax this year or current year. So what does it mean? That means that on 31st of October, 2020, we have to we had to file uh, and pay for the year 2019, including preliminary, preliminary, preliminary tax for 2020, which means it's like just a double amount of tax from the 2019. And let's face it, that's quite a lot. Even if we could compare that uh, one year is exactly the same as the other one, we have to pay it. Let's say we do pay it by the 31st of October. So we're actually missing two months. So obviously, it's a completely different situation if someone has season work, seasonal work and completely different situation now in the year 2020 when we are not working the way, the way we would normally work uh, in the previous year. I know it's not the 31st of October, but we already done that because basically you have time by the from January to October to do that if you want to. Um, but the trick what I found out and I do is that because I do all because even though we have accountant, I do our kind of our own uh, books to to have an idea how much tax we're going to pay in the year 2019. And by because I know that. I could pay to Collector General uh, close enough the same amount by the 30. That way, that amount would have been deducted from the, the amount of a tax we meant to pay on the 2019th, and that amount would be multiplied by two to pay as a preliminary tax. I hope that makes sense. Therefore, if I miscalculated and I paid on 31st of December a little bit more, then the calculation show will show that we have a um, tax return and instead of claiming it, we're just telling the revenue that they can keep it for the next year. And that's what we were doing from the moment we started, but that was a while, while back. And I think if you check now, there might be... Um, Thing that for the first year, if you don't earn more than 20,000, you may not have to pay preliminary tax. But uh, like I said, it always gathered. So if you pay upfront, at least next one, you will have less. I hope I explained that right. And that's kind of main taxes. However, you may also hear something like universal social charge. And when you are employee, normally it is dividable to three thresholds. And... Um, it's quite interesting because in that case, um, there is a one threshold that you pay a certain percentage from it. Once you pass that, there is another threshold, but only that gap, you pay that percent. And if you go over another one, you pay only that percent. Um, so yeah, maybe it's over here if I Google it and let you know what it is now. Although, you know, it changes every year. So what's the point? <laughs>
check it. And then it might be other stuff, but if you get an accountant, accountant will do those cal extra calculations for you. Um, but that, those are kind of main ones. I'm not sure have I told you, but just to be aware, in regards, you are going to use some platforms to sell your products. Um, I am, you may know, I'm on Ravelry, Etsy and Lovecrafts. And those three platforms are completely, they have completely different system of dealing with accounts, um, just to be aware of. I know there is a new website uh, for selling digital patterns, Ribbler. I've already sent a message to owners and at the moment I'm a little bit hesitant. I ask one question, I'm a little bit not happy with answer, let's say that way, from, from perspective of accountants. Some website can sell on digital products, some website can sell both, and what you need to know when you're setting up your shop is, are they giving you access to properly set up your shop to your own tax needs? Example, let's say I'm selling goods, so let's say I'm selling yarn, and if I wanted to sell yarn just in Ireland, well, it wouldn't be so difficult. Um, if I'm not VT or I'm VT, we know now what to do. So now let's say I want to sell that yarn to other European, European Union countries, so let's say I'm based in Ireland. And now we'll be ask, answering those two questions. Where is it sold to? and who is selling it. So I, Ireland, I'm selling yarn to other European countries, which means that for goods, I charging my VT. So even though, let's say, the person from Luxembourg is going to buy yarn and their standard rate is 17%, they will have to pay my rate, which is 23%. Okay, lockdown, 21% until the end of February. Or let's say we have a person who purchased the yarn from me from Ireland, but they live in Denmark. And in Denmark, standard rate is 25%, but my one is 23%. So they will have to pay my uh, VAT on those goods. But this is an example of business to a client, business to client in only European Union. So let's say scenario that we have business to business and let's say that I'm buying supplies from Poland and I live in Ireland. Therefore, the person who sells the supply, supplies lives in Poland. And in the business business situation, when we have registered people from for VAT, and there is a website that you can actually check are they registered. In that situation, you do they call it self something, self something. Okay, I forgot, and I'm not going to check. Self adding VAT on the invoices self adding that's probably not a good word. Basically, what you need to look at is either two, two things, is business to client or business to business. And check those things how you should invoice someone. I'm not talking too much about it because it'll take me a while, but I would say check it out. And then obviously there is a th situation, do you have to pay VAT if you sell from outside European Union? As an example, uh, businesses who would want to sell to European Union, they have to register for VAT. Uh, so it could be the same situation other way around. Register for that and um, pay the taxes over that. Now let's move on to digital product. And digital product is something that uh, in the knitting community could be um, an ebook or it could be a knitting pattern in PDF file. So we have two times, we have automated and kind of manual one and what is the difference so um let's talk crafty language if i sell patterns on ravelry um, basically i upload pdf file once and then from now on i'm not doing anything because the client who would want to buy my full of this hat goes on the website clicks buys and the website straight away sends the pattern to the client so obviously this is automated and in that case the VAT needs to be charged. Now if it's not automated as the situation probably would be that um, someone sends me an email asking me for a pattern I have to sit down reply to an email edit to my attachment uh, edit as an attachment and send it to them and it is not automated because it involves me to do a physical work. And in that case, or may or may not charge a VAT, depends of your country situations. And yeah, ask your accountant. Therefore, in European Union, if you sell patterns, they created a um, website which is 
called MOSS Moss, and which is a short for Mini One Stop Shop. And basically, if you register, if you are registered for VAT, you can register on that website. However, what I've heard that only in two countries you can register for that VAT if you sell patterns from outside of European Union to and European countries, and you can do that either in Ireland or in Cyprus. 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 In Cyprus. I heard, I'm not sure why only those two, maybe there's an option for more, I just literally just heard it once about that and kind of got into my brain. So once you registered for VT, and then basically it's quite simple, uh, you, you pay VT quarterly so every three months on the 19th of the next one so the next one so basically january february march and then you have to pay it by then file it and pay it by the 19th of april and you do that every three months uh, what you do um for instance raverly helps you with that uh, when you go to your section invoices you will see um quarterly you probably see Q1 or Q2 or Q3 or whatever like that. If you picked an option that you would want to file that um, MOS VAT by yourself. So basically, um, Ravelli gives you a table and you print that table and you are going to that you're going to that um, other website and fill in the table. Obviously, you don't. Uh, fill your country if you live on uh, if you live in European Union you don't I don't count Ireland because I have to file a different like a standard invoice for Ireland uh, because I pay taxes in Ireland so I don't have to go on mass to pay taxes on Ireland I just have to go on mass to pay taxes to different countries and uh, what I put over there I put subtotal and basically I picked the rate that Raverly has already in those tables and it kind of tells me how much I have to pay and also I'm just thinking I know I had to go on the website to register but through, through the ROS when you go to the section but through the ROS when you log into your account you will have information pay taxes if you click that you will have a list of the taxes you can pay obviously you have income tax but below in that you will have Either they call it MOS VAT or they call it VIES. Um, so you click those two, and then I think you'll be kind of transported to that website to fill those countries and um, write down that. Uh, once you filed it, you have to go back to your ROS uh, account, and then you go to the section pay, t pay taxes, and then you again scroll, pick the MOS or VIES MOS, and you pay. And normally, either you have direct debit so credit card or other option there so it's not difficult um, I'm not sure how it works with Raverly from perspective of Moss if you uh, let them to pay well anyway I hope now I hope they're giving some information how much of every VAT you pay to each country because your revenue in your country may ask you to provide information how much um, Raverly paid on your behalf and you have to have those numbers otherwise they will say that we don't have it right we don't have it on file um, if they class if they include that uh, VAT into uh, the platform tax payments under their name so it has to be under your name so just to be aware and uh, just maybe present that to your accountant and ask will that be um, okay uh, if you don't want to do it yourself but if you want to do it yourself it's not difficult <laughs> just saying it just you make make sure that you pay on time but that's not it obviously if you are on Raverly you don't only sell to European Union you sell also from to outside European Union and sometimes so taxes are charged over that and R Raverly is very good with that because they add now on the top of your price a tax that the customer will have uh, will have to pay so for instance i have a uh, many well many i have a few sales from australia a raverly collects from the customers that vat and then pays on my behalf however when so they send me a bill for the fees and uh, they're included as well that how much they paid on my behalf and now in those fees i need to return those money to to them it's, obviously there's a little bit more i think because of the service that they provide but yeah you know, so worth it worth it and there are a few countries maybe on the screen that if when you sell digital patterns uh, they you should um 
pay those countries GST. And if you check that, that list, that list I'm taking from actually um, Etsy because they have really nice information about um, accounting and stuff like that. So in regards Etsy from perspective of goods, we talk about that, you know, in regards VET, do you have to, do you don't have to, and so on, so on. In regards um, digital, digital sales, um, they say that they collect VETs and GSTs and stuff like that, and they pay on your behalf. Um, I haven't got my first invoice yet, but I'm hoping that it will be included information how much of each they paid to certain countries um, because that will be very important. Um, normal documentation in Ireland you have to keep for six years, however any digital sales you have to keep documentation for 10 years. And probably I'm answering straight away question why I don't sell a digital patterns on my website uh, because basically I would have to register myself to uh, countries to pay them GSTs on digital goods. Um, yeah. So if you want to sell your digital goods, digital patterns on your website, you have to take that for consideration. If you find on the country's website, uh, some country's website, there is a threshold for uh, goods that could relate only to the registered companies in their country not outside countries, so you have to check that out. If it says for digital goods, that could also reflect on the for that the threshold is only for the companies um, that they're registered in the country. Now you hopefully will have an idea what route you'd want to pick, what car do you want to get in and start driving. So you can tell that to your accountant. Also, um, they should tell you how to create an invoice, how to um, collect your bills, how they need to be numbered. They probably will tell you that you have to have separate bank account for your business uh, because that's way it'd be easier for them to do the bookkeeping otherwise you will have to give them access to your personal account um, however like I said if you are a sole trader or you are a partnership you have to also provide those accounts to your accountant so everything works together but it's quicker to check if you have it separate the last part is that you will need to know more about inventory. Inventory is something that is also included in your bookkeeping. So basically what you need to, what you need to know, you need to know all the time the amount, so how many quantities you have and what its overall price um, for those inventory you have. Hopefully I'm exp hopefully I'm explaining them right. There are three ways of calculating that how much value of uh, that products that you have on in your warehouse or in your inventory have so definitely i would say check that out too if you are selling goods always calculate your costs before you sell anything and try to create some business plan so you have more income than expenses now if you have any suggestions any comments please leave them down below under the video i hope you enjoyed this one quite unusual video that i have on this channel but like i said i was asked if i could help out or share my knowledge about this and i tried to, i tried to do my best so i hope you enjoyed this one see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe like to see more knitting and crocheting inspirations Bye.